Tangents, the dream of 24-year-old filmmaker David Giancola came to life in the summer of 1991. Using the talent of local actors and crew, Giancola filmed this time travel adventure with a low budget entirely on location against the scenic backdrop of Vermont's Green Mountains. Tangents is about a college professor who invents uh, a time machine, basically. Young man uh, invents marvelous machine to uh, benefit mankind. High tech corporation comes along, finds evil use for machine. Young man spends rest of movie trying to recoup his mistake for selling out. And does he succeed? Well, you'll see. We're never gonna get to that plane. Yes, we are. What would MacGyver do? Take a piece of gum and turn it into a nuclear device. And I'm out of gum. Starring in the role of Nick Miller, the inventor of the time machine is Matt Brew. Bonnie Pritchard plays newspaper reporter Lisa Henson. Peter Harrington is GenCorp executive Matthew Paul. And George Woodard plays the sinister J.K. Robertson. Giancola, who wrote and directed Tangents, began making movies in his backyard at the age of 12. His passion for film led him to create Edgewood Entertainment, a commercial production company. How do we know this will work? I told you already. I saw it last night in Outer Limits. With a script of Tangents in hand and Edgewood to back him up, Giancola started casting actors and crew. Producer Peter Beckwith had the tough job of tracking down funding for the film. Over two years later, when the film was finally finished, relatives, banks, private investors, and unknowingly a few major credit card companies had all invested money in Tangents. Despite the financial limitations, production progressed. Quite rapidly, Giancola infected a core group of cast and crew with his boundless enthusiasm. This then rubbed off on many others, and the scale of tangents grew. Since most of the cast and crew had normal day jobs, filming took place mostly on weekends. The production moved all across the state of Vermont, recreating the different time periods required for the film. Soon, great things began to materialize on the set. Interestingly enough, what happened was as we started filming the movie, um, I found out as we went along that I was able to do a lot more than I thought we were gonna be able to do. Almost everyone who worked on the film did so for deferred compensation in the form of a share of the film's profits. The only immediate payment was the hands-on experience they gained in filmmaking. The chance to do a movie, <clears throat> for me as well, I'm sure for a lot of the other people, was such a wonderful experience because all of us, I think, would love to be out there in the movie world. It would be like being turned loose in, in Wonderland with a bunch of your friends every weekend. We're here on the set of Tangents, a moderately budgeted local film. And here's the star. Let's go to Luke and Bach, Texas, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Let's go to Luke and Bach, Texas. Here, here we go. Here we go. Ready? Action. Let's go to Luke and Bach, Texas. Waylon and Willie and the boys. <laughs> this expensive life we're living got us feuding like the Hatfields and McCoys. Hmm. <laughs> It's a metal break. And blue eyes crying in the rain. Out in Luke and Buck, Texas. Ain't nobody running this plane. Ain't nobody feeling. No pain. I can argue that point, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Like to play something from our second album now. It's called. Crazy. It's called. I got it. It's called. If I had a nickel for every time I thought about you. I think about you more often. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things about a low-budget film is that uh, a lot, <laughs> a lot has to be done by all the parties involved, and you you, you do more than just one thing. People uh, doubled up on their jobs. If something was needed, somebody would stand in and do that. Yeah. If um, a scrim had to be held, an actor would stand in and hold it for him. 
As work continued, the volunteer crew complement dwindled to only its hardcore devotees as the shoot ranged from sweltering days in July into bone-chilling November. This is what you do in a low-budget film. Rather than a motorhome, we share cars. <laughs> it's a nice warm car. This happens to be Bonnie's car, but it has a heater, so that's good enough for everybody. And um, the other thing that you do in almost any film is you do a lot of waiting around. That's just the nature of films or the magic of film, as it would be. Shooting for Tangents was completed in the middle of November 1991. Giancola spent well over a year in post-production on the film, mixing and polishing sound, picture, and the film's elaborate special effects. Composers Alice and Bill Kinsey created a moving musical score for the film adding the last finishing touches. All of the elements of hard work, talent, dedication, and hope had finally come together. Please, just tell us what happened. What's happened is obvious. Not to us. I used to work for the government. Oh, when we were the only ones who had it, things were great. Had what? The time transport. Some aviation company invented it and sold it to the highest bidder, the government. We thought the bomb was bad. What did the government do with the transport? The ultimate weapon. Great for assassinations. Who needs to control the media when you can control history? Hell, we went back and won wars we lost. The thing about it, the movie that I've said before is that it's got something for everybody. Um, people who really like action, it's got a lot of action in it. And yet, it's got an involved plot for science lovers and futuristic things. And yet, it's also got a little bit of love, which is what I like. And it's just got a little bit of everything for everybody.